Hi to all the participants. Thanks for still staying with us throughout this whole course of lectures. To put it all together, we're going to summarize what we are going to learn throughout this at once life support course. In a collapsed patient, he or she can be having either a cardiac arrest, which is a pulses rhythm, including shockable rhythm or non-shockable rhythm, or actually having a cardiac output with tachy or bradyarrhythmia. arrhythmia. In a shockable rhythm, which is our VF and pulses VD, follow this algorithm, DRS ABCD. Avoid danger, check for response. If patient is unresponsive, shout for help to activate emergency response system, call for defibrillator and resuscitate trolley. Open patient's airway, assess for breathing. If patient is not breathing or having agonal breathing, consider this is a sign of cardiac arrest, initiate the chest compression. Defib the patient immediately as soon as the defibrillator is available with 200 Joule on bifacet defibrillator and 360 Joule on monofacet defibrillator. After the first shock, immediately resume high quality chest compression with minimal interruption. At this stage, within these two minutes, you should emphasize on high quality chest compression, which is push hard and fast, rate of 100 to 120, with a depth of 5 to 6 cm, allow full chest recoil, avoid hyperventilation, and the chest compression to the ventilation ratio should be 30 chest compression followed by two ventilation. And don't forget to rotate the chest compressor after two minutes. After two minutes is up, you should check, should ch stop the chest compression and check for the rhythm and also the pulse. If the cardiac monitor is still showing VF or pulseless VT, immediately shock the patient again. This is the second shock. After the second shock, immediately resume your chest compression and also give IV adrenaline 1 mg IV push. And you can repeat this every 3 to 5 minutes. And within these 2 minutes, you should be able to establish the airway by intubation and resume the chest compression continuously with begging every 6 seconds. After 2 minutes is up, you stop the chest compression again and check for rhythm and pulse. If it's still shockable rhythm, which is VF or pulses VT, attempt another shock. This is the third shock. After the shock, immediately resume high quality chest compression. And now you can consider antiarrhythmic drug because now it's considered a refractory. VF or pulses VT. Give IV amiodarone 300 mg bolus over 1 to 2 minutes, or you can give IV lignocaine 1 to 1.5 mg per kilo bolus over 1 to 2 minutes. If the patient is known to be hypomagnesemic or the VT is a torsat dipoa, you should consider giving IV medsaf. This will continue every two minutes for you to check the pulse and the rhythm again. If it's shockable rhythm, you should resume attempts to defibrillate the patient. In non-shockable rhythm, which is asystole and PA, the same algorithm applies, DRS, A, B, C, D, but it differs by D, there's no defibrillation for non-shockable rhythm, there's only drugs. Your drugs is IV adrenaline every 3 to 5 minutes 1 mg IV push and resume the CPR as soon as possible after every 2 minutes of rhythm and pulse check. And during the CPR process, not to forget the cause of PA and asystole, you must consider the 6H and 5T.
if the patient is having persistent asystole and PA, despite the medications and CPR that you are ongoing, you must consider the quality of the resuscitation, whether it's adequate or not. Ensure a high quality chest compression with the rate of 100 to 120 and depth of 5 to 6 centimeters. Minimize interruption, allow full chest recoil. Avoid hyperventilation and not to forget to rotate the chest compressor every two minutes. Look at the patient for any atypical clinical features that might suggest any reversible causes such as tension pneumothorax or PE. Consider stopping the resuscitation if the resuscitation does not yield any positive result and patient is having persistent acetone and also if the patient is already arrested for quite some time and look for DNR order from the family members or maybe from the previous notes. If your resuscitation is successful, you have a written or spontaneous circulation reassured by having a pulse. Then you should continue your oxygen delivery Titrating to the SpO2 and the PO2 on the ABG, avoid hyperoxia. Keep the line patent and make sure there's adequate IV access for the medications, maybe the vasopressor, inotropic support, and also the sedations. And keep the patient monitor closely, just in case there's any deterioration or any instability again. If your patient is having a pulse, experiencing a tachyarrhythmia, you should decide whether the patient is a stable or unstable patient. If there is sign of instability, immediately synchronize cardio with the patient. After three times of synchronized cardio version, if it's not reverted, consider for medication, which is IV amiodarone. In a stable tachyarrhythmia, you should give the patient medication as indicated and perform some maneuvers such as carotid massage and valsalva maneuver. In bradyarrhythmia, if patient is stable, you can observe the patient without giving any medication. However, if the patient is symptomatic or unstable, you should consider either pharmacological or electrical pacing. Pharmacological in, uh, medication includes atropine, dopamine and adrenaline. To increase the success rate of the CPR, team effort is very, very important. To begin with, a good team member should be equipped with good knowledge, led by a good team leader who know how to delegate the job well, and throughout the process, helping each other with a closed loop system will ensure the success of the CPR. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the course. Good day.